take two. Sorry about the shaky camera, I'm just shooting it with my um, phone. Uh, I'm just going to run through how I'm going to turn this piece of hot rolled, 16mm thick, into this. Uh, it's an exhaust manifold flange for a Ford 351 Cleveland. Uh, and uh, I'll be welding on some stainless 90 degree bends. Uh, I've got it set up in Fusion at the moment. Uh, I've gone through my cam. So basically the op is that uh, I've got a piece of 425mm by 16 by 75. Take a facing cut. 1.5 mil deep, deep drilling for 10.7 mil drill. Uh, adaptive clear on the ports. The ports are, uh, are lofted, so there's a contour blending the shape of the exhaust port on the head into the circle of the uh, bend. Next up, we have the 2D clear. Uh, just down to the top of the soft jaws and that'll give me something to grab onto when I flip it over then move on to just a final cut contour around the edge and then a uh, deburr or chamfer all the way around then we flip it over and notice the change of the G54 uh, the G54 now just runs off the bottom of the part, not the stock. And same thing again, face it. Uh, this is 13mm thick, so I take off another 1.5mm. Uh, a contour on the inside here with a 6mm ball mill. Uh, this side of the port, ideally you want smooth. And the other side doesn't matter. I'm not going to bother smoothing out the steps that are left over from the 3D adap adaptive because uh, the 3D adaptive and 2D adaptive uh, steps are just roughing steps. Then uh, we move on to a contour. This side is just a straight up slot cut into here. It'll be going through about 7mm of uh, deep of material, 8mm, mm The uh, depth of cut is uh, model top. 6.2. The other way I could do it is go uh, from the origin and come up uh, 6.5, and that way I'll miss the top of my soft jaws by 5 mil. Oh, sorry, 0.5 of a mil. And lastly, the chamfer around the edges. So what I'll do now is just quickly run you through how I'll, I'll post it. So this is what we're doing first, so post it out. Uh, give it a comment. So I'll just cleave one first side. Uh, I'm drip feeding uh, the programs now. Um, programs are getting to a side size where they're too big to fit into the memory of the FANUC controller. So I have to drip feed them in. I've got a PC set up which I've networked to this laptop and so when I save this it saves it directly to the uh, PC at the Mori. So I post that out to save, overwrite previous. Uh, then we'll I've VNC'd the PC at the uh, Mori, so we'll get rid of that. Close that down. Uh, and we'll open up the one we just did. And we know it's the one we just did because it says Cleveland first side. And that's the program. So I'll queue it up to, to uh, run at the machine, hit start. Now it'll sit there waiting until I hit start on the machine. I'll head over to the machine now. Right. I've had to set up two vices to hold the material. Uh, soft jaws in both. Basically clamp, 
closed the soft jaws up, then ran a 12mm end mill right the way through. So all of these surfaces are in the same plane. And uh, the last flange I did, I just picked up the aluminium on the top of this soft jaw, broke an end mill. As soon as you clog up the flutes on an end mill with a little bit of aluminium, that's it, bang game over so uh, yeah snapped an 8 mil end mill on that one it's a bit annoying um, so we'll drop a little bit of steel in there we go so uh, G54 at the end here this first step isn't critical just as long as I've got it lined up pretty much with the end there. So we'll plant, just lightly clamp that up. We'll grab our hammer, give them a good whack. up in the, uh, on the PC, so it should be just a matter of putting the, the mode in the tape mode, or drip feed mode, hitting start. All of these feeds and speeds I've taken out of HSM Advisor. Uh, whether that's correct or not, uh, I don't know. I'm not using any coolant for this, it's all carbide. Uh, I haven't got much of a clear spot on this Perspex on the door either, so. Very sorry, I, I meant to bring my SLR in to film this, but I left it at home. And I just want to get this done today, so... I uh. uh, just got a couple of calls from my wife. Uh, anyway, just coming back on the flip side for the... That's throwing off a nice blue chip. So I've got an option stop set up, so turn that on, every time it hits an MO1 in the code, it'll pause, so to move on to the next step, we just uh, hit start, start again, that gives you time just to check everything's okay and uh, you can get in there and um, blow some chips off and just make sure everything's right. Uh, sort of get the borderline of the, oh there you go, the chips just fell off. Yeah. Right, it's all good. I'll just get in there and give a quick blow out. Right, so 
Yeah, nice finish on the base mill. Start again. Uh, that's an 8 mil four flute carbide coated end mill. It's always a worry when you first plunge down to the material whether it's going to pull up in time. And we've got the hand just hovering over the reset button and just in case it uh, doesn't like it. Now, uh, width of the cut here is 3.2 millimetres. Depth, depth of, oh, this will be going all the way through, but I'm running at 8 mil, so I'm doing it in two steps. So, 8 mil depth of cut. Uh, it should be starting to speed up here. There you go. It's just doing the uh, the lofted section. Yeah, the lighting in this machine is just ridiculous. So put the spotlight right up top here, pointing down at this angle, and then they went and put the coolant lines directly in line with where the light is. And when you you're normally going to be this close to your work anyway, the light's hitting the side of the bloody tool post. So here we're putting in the um, contour for the pipe to sit in. Now I might just stop. Oh no, that'll be alright. There's not that many chips in there. There's always that little squeal on that initial contact. As it helicals in, now we should get some sparks flying as it busts through that, uh, there we go, busts through that hot roll layer. Uh, and that's it, so now we're taking off doing our, would be good to have a bit of an air blast in there to blow all that out. Um, I've had a couple of end mill, or a couple, quite a few end mills break on me whilst I'm learning all this and uh, yeah, they put on a bit of a show when they just about bust. They start glowing red and throwing sparks everywhere and yeah. The other thing when you're doing a program like this I'm um, just big, well, like it's probably not big, but for a Fanic Zero M controller, it's, it's big. Uh, yeah, got a fairly small memory. This has been maxed out on the memory size. Hang on, I might just stop. Alright, that's finished. That. Oh, so that's your 2D adaptive clear through there. Um, all done the deburl chamfer operation. So now I just need to flip it over, and this edge here will now be the in line with the G54 which is in that line with that edge there and uh, run the other side program okay parts done Uh, that looks good.